أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة كل بدعة ضلالة كل ضلالة في النار أما بعد مدير brothers and sisters our topic is conviction that merits success we all know or most of us know Iman the Iman according to the definition of Iman according to the methodology of the best three generations Sahaba, Tabi'een, Tabi'i, Tabi'een it consists of three inseparable elements, three inseparable components. The conviction is one of them, which we refer to as the i'tiqad. And the formula for Iman, Iman has a formula. Memorize this formula. Iman, E, e equal what? Einstein's <laughs> okay. E equal U A C very easy. Iman equal U A C utterance, actions, convictions. Clear? How many elements there? Three. What are they? The utterance, the actions of the limbs. The conviction and the heart. U A C. So this is the formula of Iman. And these three elements they are multiplied. So Iman equal the utterance multiplied by the actions of your limbs multiplied by the conviction in your heart. So what will happen if one of the three elements of the three variables, these are variables. If one of the three variables becomes zero, what comes to the, happens to the Iman? Zero. Are you following? If one is zero, the Iman is zero. No actions. No amal. I just believe God is one. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And I believe in all of that. But no amal, no actions. What is my Iman? Zero. That will not make you a Muslim. That will not make you a Muslim. You know why? Iblis had the conviction. True or not? Iblis. He believes God is one? Yes. He believes in the oneness of Allah? Yes. Fir'aun. He believes in the oneness of Allah? Yes. Apparently he's denying it. But he knows the truth. That's why when he was drowning, he said what? Amantu? Annahu la ilaha illa alladhi amanat bi banu Israel. Did that help him? Are you following? So even the conviction itself is not sufficient. Abu Talib. What do you think of Abu Talib? Did he know that the Prophet 
is from Allah, is a prophet of Allah, or didn't he? He did. He said clearly, وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ دِينَ مُحَمَّدٍ خَيْرَ أَدْيَانِ الْبَرِيَّةِ دِينَ Did that help him? Where is Abu Talib? In the hellfire, right? Those who were at the time of the Prophet ﷺ without mentioning name as Allah alluded to them, يَعْرِفُونُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ Did they know that he was the Prophet or not? They knew. Did that help them? No. They used to come to the circle of the Prophet Sallallahu and they would sneeze, pretend to sneeze, you know that. They would come and sit in the circle of the Prophet Sallallahu and they would pretend to sneeze, that they were sneezing. Looking for what? Yarhamkum, Allahu Akbar. They knew he was the Prophet of Allah. They knew that. So they were looking for this da'wah, this du'a. And the Prophet Sallallahu knew what they were after. He used to tell them what? Yahdikum Allahu yuslah dalikum. May Allah guide them and may Allah amend your affairs. No yarhamkum Allah. Huh? Are you following? So the conviction is not enough. But it is one of the components. And this conviction has to be sound, correct. If you have the wrong conviction, problem. Because you have to have the right iman, the right belief. Because every human being ha has a belief. Every human being. Because without the belief, you cannot move one step forward. You know, I have to believe that the water will quench my thirst or not. If I don't believe that it will quench my thirst when I am thirsty, will I run to the water? Huh? Will I fetch for water? So I have to believe that the water will quench my thirst. That the food will remove the pangs of my hunger. That the medicine by the grace of Allah will be a cause for my cure. Are you following? So that's why the iman or the belief is something inherent within the human being. You cannot get rid of it. So the iman is the conviction and the utterance. You have to express this iman orally. And that's when you say your kalima, right? I testify there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad is his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so you have to express it unless you are unable you cannot speak then you can write or give us a gesture or a sign that you believe in this and then the actions the amal because you know many muslims today iman everyone tapping his heart true or not where is the iman here Sheikh, Iman is here. Everyone is tapping his heart. Where is the Salah? Here. Where is the Zakah? Here. One of our Mashaikh, Sheikh Abu Ishaq al he said, I was discussing with one brother, and he said, Brother, where is the beard? He said, Here. Even the beard is in the heart. You see? Yeah, dump yard, you know? You can't dump everything there. Sister, where is the salah? Where is the hijab? Here, Sheikh. Huh? Mini skirt crossing her legs. Sheikh, Iman is here. <laughs> Subhanallah. So, actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, throughout the book of Allah, throughout the Quran, Iman and Amal together, right? Ladina amanu wa amilu. They go together, hand in hand. And when we work on these three variables in Ramadan, what do you feel about your Iman in Ramadan? Goes up or falls down? Why? 
What happened to the three variables? What happened to the actions of Ramadan? MashaAllah, Taraweeh, Qiyam Layl, all the five prayers in the Masjid. A'mal, reading the Quran. So the A'mal are increasing. So the Iman? Increasing. The actions increased, Iman increased. Utterances, istighfar, tahleel, takbir, Iman increases. So remember that the Iman consists of three components. U, A, C, utterance, action, and conviction. And all these three, each one of them can increase and decrease. Right? The actions can increase and decrease, right? Good. Utterance is yes. How about the conviction? Can it increase? What do you think? Yes. Ibrahim said, Rabbi arini kayfa tuhid mawta. Ibrahim said, Oh my Lord, show me how you give life to the dead. Allah said, Oh, well, I'm tu'min. Didn't you believe? He said, What? Bala. Walakil yatma'inna qalbi. He said, Yes, I believe, but I want more certainty, more yaqeen. What Allah said, فَخُذْ أَرْبَعَةً إِلَى الطَّيْرِ فَصُرْهُنَّ إِلَيْكَ Take four pigeons, hold them to yourself, cut them, distribute them on the mountains around you, and then call them. And they come fluttering their wings. The question is, is Ibrahim's Iman the same or more? After seeing that. More. The conviction more or less? More. So even the conviction itself can increase. And the more you know the issues of Iman by the details, proofs and evidences, the deeper and the stronger the Iman will be in your heart. And that's why the Iman of the ulama is not like the Iman of the common man. The common man, anyone can come to him and say, you know, it is saying this like, in the, here saying this in the Quran, here saying this in another surah, and I received plenty of emails like that. As he's telling you, there are contradictions in the Quran. And you say, believe me, I, I never thought about it. Yeah, you have a point. You have a point. You know, by saying you have a point, that means he managed and succeeded in putting the seed of doubt in your heart. Why? Because your conviction is weak, shallow. You know, at the time of Umar ibn Khattab, guy came, Sabir, he came from Mas Egypt, Masr, and he started asking the Sahaba the same question. Allah is saying here this, here is saying this, as if he's telling them there are contradictions. The Sahaba, they kept quiet. You fool, you, you play with us. We are the students of the Prophet We know the Quran better than you. They kept quiet and they informed the Prophet, uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Umar said, where is he? They said, this guy. He said, come, give me the stick. This is the Umari remedy. The stick. Well, give me the stick. And he started beating the man till his back was bleeding. He said, take him and treat him. When the wounds are healed, he should come for the second dose. And he did this to the man three times. The third time he said, by Allah, all the ideas and the thoughts I had, gone, vanished. Okay? So, you should not allow anyone to put the seed of doubt in your heart. If you have strong conviction, that's why you have to study the Iman, study it. Conditions, then just, this is, these are just like recaps. Then we'll delve to the topic. Conditions of the deeds. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, we want Allah to accept our a'mal, right? We want, inshallah, when we die, we enter the Jannah. So there are three conditions. If you fulfill them by the grace of Allah, your deeds, inshallah, will be accepted. Number one, tawheed. Tawheed. Worshipping only. 
Allah. Should I worship Allah or Abdul Qadir Jilani? Ah, Allah. Should I say, oh Allah or Abdul Qadir Jilani? Oh Allah. Okay? I only worship Allah and call upon Allah, Al Hayyul Qayyum. Everything I need, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second thing, I do things for him and him only, and that is the ikhlas. Sincerity. Third condition, your amal should comply. Comply with the sharia. Should be in line with what the Prophet ﷺ did. How many conditions are there? Three. What are they? Tawheed, ikhlas, compliance with the Quran and Sunnah. What the Prophet did, we do. What he didn't do, we leave it. Someone comes and says, brother, do this. I ask him, did the Prophet do it? No. Sorry, Baba. There's nothing wrong with it. No, no, there's a big thing about it. Huh? Something the Prophet didn't do, I will not do. But this is good, brother. Who told you it is good? Did the Prophet say so? Yes, show me. No. How did he know about it, brother? When the Prophet didn't know about it in the first place. Are you following brothers and sisters? Good. What is the importance of the conviction, the sound conviction? Because you see, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has singled out this deen, the deen al-Islam, the beauty deen, by making all its teachings spring from the, this divine creed, divine doctrine, founded on yaqeen, certainty. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ no doubts in it. Our belief in Islam is based on ilm, yaqeen. Not take it on faith. Take it by your heart. No. Allah said, the Prophet said. The Prophet وسلم, as you know, how many years he stayed in Mecca? Thirteen years. Doing what? Drilling this conviction in the hearts of the, of the Sahaba. Then they moved to Medina. Now, Salah, Siyam, Zakah, Khamar, leave the Khamar. No problem. Immediately. Because now they are ready. Hijab came. Immediately the women, they covered their, themselves. We hear and we obey. We hear and we obey. And believe me, my dear brothers and sisters, the sound conviction reduces miracles. You know the Arabs before Islam, they were barbaric, savage, burying their own daughters alive. And all of a sudden, this deen, this aqidah, this conviction, this belief transformed them. Said no, Umar had two black lines on his cheek because of his constant weaving. Mus'ab, radiallahu anhu, he was wearing the sheep, the skin of the sheep, though before he would walk dressed completely in silk. So Hayb Rumi, when he left Mecca, he left all his wealth, all his wealth. He left it in Mecca for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he arrived in Medina, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the deal you made with Allah is profitable. al Khansa. see this is what the conviction does, the aqeedah. She sent all her children to the battlefield. And she said, I don't want to see you again. We'll meet only in the Jannah. Bye. Where we meet in the Jannah. And when the news of their istishad reached them, said Alhamdulillah. Bilal used to mix the, the sweetness of Ahad and Ahad with the pain and the agony. He said, only I can, by Allah, the sweetness wa was overwhelming everything. The sweetness of that kalima. The aqeedah, the conviction, my dear brothers and sisters, it's the foundation. 
upon which the whole deen is built. Now, if I want to build a tower, tall building, skyscraper, what should I make first? Foundation. If the foundation cannot stand the weight, the civil engineer or the architect will say sorry. The whole building will collapse. The foundation. And the believers, the deeds of the believers only will be accepted. Disbelievers' deeds will not be accepted. Why? Because they had the wrong conviction, the wrong belief. They were helping the, the needy, the destitute, all that. But they didn't worship Allah. You know, Aisha one day asked the Prophet, ﷺ, she said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, Ibn Jad'an, Ibn Jad'an was one before Islam, and he was very generous, feeding the people all the time. The pots 24 hours on the fire. The people, they go to the pots by ladders. Can you imagine? He said, did that help him? Prophet ﷺ said, no. That will not benefit him anything. Because he did not believe in Allah. Don't say he's a good. Who told you he's good? When he didn't worship Allah. He's not good. Are you clear? Is this clear to everyone? Allah said about such group of people they are like the camels indeed worse than the cattle they are worse than the cattle because the cattle they know Allah and they worship Allah now how do we safeguard our conviction and our aqidah how do we safeguard it? We can safeguard it, my dear brothers and sisters, by following the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions and those who followed their footsteps. If you follow that footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ, his companions, and the students of the companions, you are in the right direction. You are on the right path. Because Allah has given us assurities about the Sahaba. رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. Do you think Allah was pleased with them and not pleased with their way? Not pleased with their understanding? Not pleased with their methodology? No. He was pleased with everything they were upon. True or not? Because they are the students of whom? The Prophet ﷺ. You want to go to the Jannah? Walk behind Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and Talha and Zubair. Follow them. Because Allah said about them, All of them Allah promised them the Husna. What is the Husna? The Jannah. The Sahaba. Allah said, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَيْعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ So if we want to protect our iman and our aqidah, we walk behind the sahaba and follow their footsteps. Sources of the Muslims' aqidah, the Muslims' conviction, the Muslims' belief or doctrine. Where do we take our belief from? Two things. What are they? Two things only. What are they? Quran and that's it. Anyone says something that is not mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah, he is speculating, guessing. Our belief springs from the Book of Allah and the sun Sunnah of the Prophet. Now, the characteristics of the companion's methodology. The methodology, or the conviction, or the aqidah, or the belief of the Sahaba, what are the characteristics which 
qualify it and describe it. Number one, those who are taking notes. Number one, and mashallah, the remaining are Muhammad bin Ismail Bukhari, right? You are recording, inshallah, then on Monday you will retrieve, right? Mashallah. So, number one, that our aqidah is only taken from the Quran and Sunnah. Our belief is taken from the Quran and the Sunnah. Which means, basically, the wahi, revelation. Allah said, the Prophet said. Number two, they follow the Sahab. They follow the rules of deduction. This needs elaboration. What does it mean? How can I deduce from the text Quran or Hadith? How can I deduce rulings from that? There are certain rules should be applied. You know today there is a trend says you tell him this is haram the Prophet ﷺ said this the Sahaba said that he tells you that is your interpretation. My understanding and interpretation of the text is totally different. Have you heard this? This trend, the objective and the goal of it is to undermine everything. Because if everyone will understand the deen in his own way, that means chaos. Therefore, there are rules and there is a science, science developed for this purpose. It's called Ilm Usul Al Fiqh. Ilm Usul Al Fiqh. How I understand the text and how the text should be rendered and interpreted. Are you following? And the Sahaba, the, that was known to them. So they follow the rules of deduction. For example, refer mutashabah to muhkam. See the Quran, ayat. Some are muhkam, some are mutashabah. Muhkam means kufikal, and kufikal. Mutashabah, it can mean this, it can be, mean that. For example, muhkam has only one meaning. Wa ilahukum ilahun wahid. Your ilah, your God is only one. Can it be understood in any other way? No. Now, take the other ayah where Allah says, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ It is we who send down the dhikr, the reminder. And it is we, Allah talking about himself, who is going to preserve the dhikr. Those who have disease in their hearts, they did what? They left wa ilahakum ilahan wahid. And say, you see, God can be more than one. And we, the mere al jama' in Arabic, it can mean three. And they say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So why did you leave wa ilahakum ilahan wahid? Because if you put the ayah next to that, you understand that this is the royal we. Are you following? So the Sahaba, they put the muhkam next to the mutashabah, the meaning becomes clear. For example, inna anzannahu fi laylatin mubaraka. Verily, we have sent down the Quran on a blessed night. Which is blessed night? Inna anzannahu fi laylatin qadr. You put this to this, the meaning becomes clear. The mujmal to the mubayyan. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Establish the salah. How? Where are the details? The Prophet ﷺ explained that in his sunnah. So don't say, I just take this text and understand it in my way. 
Now, the Mujman next to the Mubayyad. The Wa'ad and Wa'id. Wa'ad means promise. Wa'id means threat. Wa'ad and Wa'id. Some of the sects, they went astray because they could not differentiate between Wa'ad and Wa'id. Which one has to happen and has to take place? The Wa'ad or the Wa'id? The promise or the threat? Which one? The promise. In Allah will never break his promise. But the threat can happen, cannot. It's up to Allah. He can punish you and he can forgive you. When you are angry with your son who drove you not, and then he ran away and said, wait, if I catch you, I'll break your neck. Right? And I heard you. And the boy, he went and he came back. Now I'm telling you, you see, he's there. He's there. Break his neck. Because he said, you'll break his neck. Break his neck. You tell me, you fool. How can I break the neck of my child? I was threatening, right? True or not? How about Allah who is more merciful and kind than the father and the mother? So there is a difference between the wa'ad, the promise, and the wa'id, which is the threat. The negation and affirmation. You see, when Allah negates something, by the way, negation is not, is not perfection. It's not a perfect attribute. Are you following? For example, if I say to a king, you are not a thief. Huh? You are not an oppressor. And I start giving negative attributes. You are not a liar. And the list went on. What the king will do to me? Reward me or punish me? Punish me, of course. Because I'm not praising him. Because negation is not perfection. It's not an attribute of perfection. And some people, when they talk about Allah, Allah is not like this. Allah is not like that. Allah... Oh, you see the Quran, read. Allah gives more details when he affirms the attributes. Samir, Alim, Basir, Alim. But when the attribute is negative, Allah denies it, just like that. No details. Allah will not wrong anyone. Finish. No details. The details when it is positive attribute. Are you following? So that is the, the attribute or the, uh, one of the characteristics of the Sahaba's methodology. They also explain the Quran by the Quran. And that is the best way to explain the Quran by the Quran. Number four, they understand the text as it is understood in their tongue. They understand. If, the, because the Quran came down in Arabic, that is their mother tongue. Did Abu Bakr need to open dictionary to know the meaning of the word like us today? Huh? You open the dictionary and try to understand the meaning of the word. Abu Bakr does, didn't need that. And it came down in the tongue of the Arabs. Tafsir of the Quran by the companions the tafsir of the Sahaba, have more precedence over the tafsir of others. The tafsir of Abbas is the turguman of the Quran. And the Prophet Sallallahu he prayed for him. He prayed for him. So when Ibn Abbas gives the tafsir of the ayah, his tafsir has more precedence over the tafsir of others. They avoid using the terminologies of the people of Bid'ah. 
you not find in the books of Aqidah written by the Sahaba, Tabi'een, and the three generations, you'll not find the terminologies that are used, <coughs> like for instance, the substance, the, the body, hmm? the accident, you know, it's come the, across these terminologies. They also, they avoid arguing on the deen. When it comes to the deen, they don't argue. And they argue, when they argue, they argue with that which is best, which is the best. They were not, it is not the nature of the Sahaba that they argue about the deen. They tell you, this is what Allah said, this is what the Prophet ﷺ said. That was their nature. They don't waste their time. The negate of the existence of any contradiction between intellect and revelation. This is one of the features and characteristics of Ahl Sunnah. There will never be any contradiction between the aql, the mind, and the text. A challenge. Anyone says this goes against the intellect, this doesn't exist in Islam. Bring one text that goes against the, the sound intellect. You'll never find it. It is only something hypothetical. A reality you will not find. Also, they pay a lot of attention to the importance of Isnad. The Isnad. Isnad is what? The chain of narrators. The chain of narrators. Today, no people in the face of the globe can give you unbroken chain of reliable narrators till you reach Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until they reach their own prophet. If we ask the Jews, give us unbroken chain of narrators up to Musa Rishab. They don't have it. The Christians, they don't have it. This Ummah, they have it. So that's how the deen was protected. How the stories of the past reach us? Through the people. Okay? You are on the motorway, you over, uh, turn the, the radio on. Oh my God, there's earthquake. Who told you? BBC, man. <laughs> yeah, BBC like Imam Bukhari and Muslim. <laughs> understand? Why? The source is reliable. You understand? Because the source to you is a reliable source. That's how we check the authenticity. Through the Isnad. Through the Isnad. That's why the Isnad is part of the deen. Anyone comes, the Prophet ﷺ said this, hold on, show us the Isnad. And then we scrutinize and check it. Oh, we go through it one by one. And we know everything about every narrator. So that's why the Isnad is part of the deen. Rules to follow. There are certain rules. How many minutes? Okay, good. Alhamdulillah. Certain rules we need to follow. Are you following? <laughs> okay. Rules to follow. Number one, in case of any misunderstanding of the religious text, whether Quran or Sunnah, the understanding of the Sahaba and the three generations, okay, should be the criterion. You agree with this? Do you agree with this? What the Sahaba, the way the Sahaba understood this ayah and hadith, and then those who followed them, and the three follow, uh, generations, including the four Imams, all of them, that's their understanding. And someone comes now and says, No, I understand it differently. Whom should we follow? Ah. So this is the rule. Number two, the Sahabas of the way of the Sahaba springs purely from the Quran and Sunnah. Sahaba, they don't give their own ideas. If they know about this particular matter, anything from the Quran and Sunnah, they say it. Otherwise, 
If it is a matter of ijtihad, they will do the ijtihad. And only those who are qualified. And that's why I said, now Umar used to call the committee to discuss with them. Our aqidah, our belief is taken, as you know, from the Kitab and Sunnah. Knowledge of the unseen can never be obtained through the aql. I want you now to share with me this point. You know now, brothers and sisters, we are in this hall, right? Assume that the doors are closed. Okay? So now all of us heard someone is knocking, right? To or not? Unanimously. Now let us try to imagine who's knocking. Do you think we'll be, there will be ijma consensus? Or everyone will have his own mental picture? Tell me. Everyone will have his own mental picture. Man, woman, boy, girl, cat. Huh? The question is, why? All of us agreed when we heard the knocks and disagreed in the second. Simply. Because now, when we heard the knocks, this is something physical, material, tangible. Waves came to your ears, the eardrum vibrated, the signal went to your brain, the brain interpreted it. Somebody at the door. That is within the domain and the functionality of the brain of the mind. Okay? Second example, out of the domain. The mind is lost. When it comes to the ghaib, the unseen, the mind is lost. If our minds cannot tell us who is at the door, can our minds tell us what is behind the heavens and all these seven skies? Tell me. When you cannot tell who is behind this wall. Is this clear? So what is the alternative? What is the solution? How can I know? Two things. One, by guessing. And this will not, you will not arrive at the right and the correct answer. You say, you are a man. No, I'm not. You are tall. No, I'm not. You are this, you are that. No, because I'm guessing. So what is the right way? Who is it? What do you want? Tell me about yourself. Are you following? So to know about Allah is to tell, let him tell you about himself. Allah tells him, tell, tell you about himself. I am this, I am that, I am that. Not that you describe Allah and you give your own speculations. Our minds should be used within that domain. The world of physics, not metaphysics. Is this clear? So the mind has its own limitation. How many times you have seen the mirage? When you saw the mirage, what did, what did you th huh, think of? The first time. The first time, what did you think? Water, right? The first time you saw the mirage, you thought it was water. Then you realize it's not water. Now, you are wo driving on the motorway, your little one, Daddy, Daddy, there is water. No, 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 it's not water. It is mirage. So what happens to the mind? The mind learns. The mind what? Learns. <clears throat> also, whoever derives the belief from other than the Quran and Sunnah, is actually lying about Allah. You're lying. If you say, in the Jannah, there is this, there is that, who told you? Show us. Produce. So if you have no proof, you have no evidence from the Quran or Sunnah, you're lying. That's simple. The belief and the correct conviction and aqidah is founded upon Number one, taslim, submission to Allah's will. Allah says this, we say we hear and we obey. 
Today there is a sickness among the Muslims. You know what is this sickness? What is the scientific explanation for this? This is the sickness nowadays. Everything has to be explained scientifically. Are you following? There are certain things you cannot explain. Why you Muslims, you eat the, the you don't eat the, the flesh of the swine, the pig, the pole. Why? You know, there is a worm inside. Come on. That is by, by product. Did the Sahaba knew about that? Or they left it because Allah said so? Tell me. Allah said so. Allah said, don't eat it, we don't eat it. Don't drink alcohol, we don't drink alcohol. Don't you see some doctors today, they say, you know, brandy is medicinal. <laughs> you know that? Doctors, yes. Little brandy is good. Wine after food is good. And they are doctors. Do we follow them? When the doctor came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, I use the alcohol, the liquor, to treat my patients, what the Prophet Sallallahu said? Inna hada wa laysa tbi dawa. It is a disease itself. The khamar itself is a disease. It's not a cure. Today if the whole world are saying, Riba is halal. And you have no option, you have to do riba. Will that make riba halal? If the whole world they want khamar, will that make it halal? They, might, they want zina, they, want, they will make that halal. Finish. That's why we Muslims say it is Allah whom we accepted as our creator and Allah knows and we don't know. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la? Ta'lamun, Allah knows and you don't? No. So it is the Iman. It is the Iman. So not everything, what is the scientific explanation? Why it was the scientific explanation that Maghrib is still in Raqqa? Why the fight of two Raqqa's? Why wudu three times? Why not five? Why not seven? You understand? So it is the Ibadah, again, that we are servants of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, he allows us to come and to know some hikmah. These are just byproducts, they come along. But the most important thing is the iman, that the creator said so. Is this clear, brothers and sisters? Okay. So, our belief is based on the submission. Number two, fellowship. We follow the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ. One of the ulama said, if you want to enter the Jannah before the Prophet ﷺ, you will never enter. With him, shoulder with shoulder, hand in hand, you will never. You want to enter the Jannah, what should you do? Walk be behind him. Seventh point, the Sahaba, the Tabi'een and the three, as you know, the Prophet ﷺ, he praised them and he said, I have left you with two things, the Qur'an and Sunnah. And you never go astray till you meet me on the fountain. And the fruit, I'll just now go quickly, the fruit and the impact of having correct belief in your heart, number one, steadfastness. You, rem you, re you remain firm because you have strong faith in your heart. You don't compromise, nothing shakes you, nothing. You know why? Who is with you? Allah. If Allah is with you, alhamdulillah, that's it. Number two, <coughs> and you, the examples of the prophets, mashaAllah, Hud alayhi salam, he told his people, do whatever you want. Look, he do in the Oh, plot, go. Do whatever you want. I'm not afraid. 
Ibrahim alayhi salam. When he destroyed all the idols, you know that. And they threw him by the catapult, right? What did he say? Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. That's it. Allah issued the command to the fire, be cool. And he remained in the fire. And he came out unhurt. Musa alayhi salam. فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَ الْجَمْعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّا الْمُدْرَكُونَ When the troops of the Pharaoh followed Musa and Bani Israel and the day is about to break now, what happened? Bani Israel said to Musa, إِنَّا الْمُدْرَكُونَ They're going to catch us. Musa said what? كَلَّا إِنَّ مَعْيَ رَبِّ سَيَهْدِينَ Nay! They cannot catch us. Why? Because I have my Rabb with me. What happened? Strike the sea with your staff, and you know the rest. The Prophet ﷺ, in the cave, Abu Bakr is saying, if one of them just look at his feet, he will see us. He said, no, Allah is with us, don't worry. When he saw Suraqa, Suraqa was chasing the Prophet ﷺ. He wanted the 100 she camels. And the four of the horse of Suraka sank on rocky land. And he fell three times. And he said, Suraka, I know what you are after. Go back. He cannot hurt us. He cannot do anything to us. Go back. And I promise you, the bracelets, the bangles of Kosovo, the emperor of Persia. Allahu Akbar. Someone, a man who is wanted. Chased, he is promising the bracelets of Kisra. And the Prophet ﷺ passed away, and Suraka became Muslim, and the Muslims took Persia, and the bracelets of the emperor were brought to Medina at the reign of Umar ibn Khattab. And Umar said, Suraka, where are you? Give me your hands. This is what Prophet Muhammad promised you. The people of the trench, and I mentioned this. In the khutbah. We finished, right? And I just conclude with the last. The lad. You know the story of the lad, the chap? When the king wanted to kill him, he said, you cannot kill me. Except to take this arrow and put it in your bow. And when you shoot, say, Bismillah Rabbul Ghulam. Then you'll be able to kill me. And when he said that, all the people they heard that there is Rab, there is Lord other than this king. And they believed. So, my dear brothers and sisters, the conviction, the conviction, the conviction, the atiqad, the correct belief is our foundation, is the driving force, is that dynamic force that gives you and keeps you forwarding. And doing righteous deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm on the haqq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds and your deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise us all in the company of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In Jannat al Naim. Ameen. 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 Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Nabina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu fikum. Jazakumullahu khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.